In the last lecture, we learned how an asynchronous JavaScript code gets executed behind the scenes by the JavaScript engine. So let's have a quick recap of what we learned in our last lecture. In the last lecture, we learned that when we have an asynchronous JavaScript code in our program, that asynchronous JavaScript code is handed over to the web API where it does its job. And the callback function attached to that asynchronous JavaScript code gets registered and it's, it waits in the web API. And once the job of the asynchronous JavaScript code is complete, the registered callback function is either passed over to the callback queue or microtask queue. Okay, so a callback function associated with an asynchronous JavaScript code waits for its execution inside either a callback queue or a microtask queue. Now, for most of the cases, the callback functions associated with an asynchronous JavaScript code, they are passed over to the callback queue where they wait for their execution. But there are some callback functions, for example, the callback functions associated with the promise, they wait inside the microtask queue for their execution. Okay, the callback functions associated with the promise, they are not handed over to callback queue they are passed over to microtask queue where they wait for their execution. Okay, so most of the callback functions associated with an asynchronous code have to wait for their execution in the callback queue. But there are some callback functions, for example, the callback functions associated with the promise, they wait for their execution in the microtask queue. The callback functions in the microtask queue takes priority over the callback function in the callback queue. Okay. That means the callback function in the microtask queue gets executed first. So when the call stack is empty and let's say in the microtask queue, we have three callback functions and in the callback queue, we have four callback functions. So when the call stack is empty, the event loop will come into picture and it will start doing its job. And what is the job of an event loop? The job of an event loop is to push callback functions from the microtask queue and the callback queue into the call stack for their execution. Now, the event loop will give priority to the callback functions which is sitting in the microtask queue. That means the event loop will push the callback functions sitting in the microtask queue first into the call stack for their execution. So the callback functions sitting in the microtask queue will be executed first. And once all the callback functions sitting in the microtask queue are executed, then only the event loop will start pushing functions from callback queue into the call stack for their execution. So here, the callback functions sitting in the microtask queue gets priority over the callback functions sitting in the callback queue. Let's understand this with an example. So here we have the JavaScript runtime environment, which consists of this call stack, this web API, microtask queue, callback queue, and event loop. Then we have a very simple JavaScript program here. And again, consider this box as browser's developer console, where we will display the output of this program. Now, when we run this program, first of all, we know that a global execution context gets created for the JavaScript program, where all the top level codes gets executed. Now, after the global execution context is created, this console.log statement will be executed. So this console.log is a function and we know that for each function we call in our program, an execution context gets created for that function. So for this console.log function also, an execution context will be created and it will get executed and it will log program starts here in the developer console. And once its execution is complete, the execution context of this console.log statement or this console.log function will pop up from the call stack. After that, we are calling this set timeout function. Now, if you notice to this set timeout function, we have specified a callback function and for the time interval, we have specified zero. That means as soon as the JavaScript thread hand over this set timeout function for its execution to the web API, its job will complete immediately because for the time interval, we have specified zero milliseconds. Let's understand this. So when the set timeout function will be called an execution context for the set timeout function will be created. 
and we know that set timeout function is provided by the web api that means it runs asynchronously so javascript will hand over this set timeout function to web api where it will do its job and the callback function attached to this set timeout function will get registered in the web api now since we are we have specified the time interval as 0 milliseconds and we know that the job of the set timeout function is to wait for a given time interval and since the time interval is 0 milliseconds the job of the set timeout function will complete immediately that means it will be removed from the web api immediately and the callback function attached to the set timeout function will be handed over to the callback queue where it will wait for its execution then we have this next statement where we are calling this resolve method on this promise object now when you call a resolve method on a promise object that promise gets resolved immediately okay so just like set timeout function this promise will also get resolved immediately so when we are calling this an execution context for this promise dot resolve will be created in the call stack and we know that a promise gets executed asynchronously so it will be handed over to the web api where it will start doing its job and since we are calling this resolve method on this promise this promise will get resolved immediately also this callback function which we are specifying for this then method this callback function will be registered in the web api for this promise and as i mentioned since we are calling this resolve method on this promise this promise will get resolved immediately that means its job will complete as soon as we hand it over to the web api and the callback function associated with this promise will be handed over to microtask queue because we have learned the callback functions associated with the promise they wait for their execution in the microtask queue okay so this callback function which is attached to this promise you know this promise it will be handed over to the microtask queue then the next statement will be executed and in the next statement we are again calling this console.log statement so an execution context for this console.log function will be created it will log this message program ends here in the developer console and it will pop off from the execution stack and in this way the execution of this javascript program is complete okay so now there are no more functions to be executed in this javascript program that means now this call stack is empty and when the call stack is empty the event loop start pushing callback functions from microtask queue and callback queue to the call stack for their execution now what do you think which callback functions out of these two you know these two will be pushed first to this call stack for its execution well we have learned that the callback functions waiting in the microtask queue gets priority over the callback functions waiting in the callback queue so event loop will first push the callback functions which is waiting in the microtask queue that means this callback function will be pushed to the call stack for its execution now from within this callback function we are calling this console.log statement so a console i mean an execution context for this console.log function will be created and it will log this resolve data in the developer console so this message and once its job is complete it will, it will get pop off from the execution stack and with this the job of the callback function is also complete so it will also get popped off from the execution stack okay so now there is no more callback functions in the microtask queue so now the event loop will start pushing the callback functions from the callback queue to the call stack for its execution now in the callback queue also we have only one callback function so this event loop will push that callback function in the call stack for its execution okay now from within this callback function we are again calling this console.log statement so an execution context for this console.log function will be created it will log the message set timeout called I mean set timeout callback executed and once its job is complete the execution context of this console.log will get popped off from the execution stack and in this way the job of the callback function associated with set timeout function is also complete so it will also get popped off from the execution stack 
So if you notice here, even though these two asynchronous programs, you know, in this program, we have these two asynchronous code. So even though we called this set timeout function first and this promise after that set timeout function, the callback function associated with this promise get executed first and after that only the callback function associated with set timeout got executed. That's because the callback function associated with the promise is, you know, it waits in the micro task queue for its execution. And for the set timeout function, the callback function associated with the set timeout function, it waits in the callback queue for its execution. And since micro task queue, the callback functions sitting in the micro task queue takes priority over the callback functions sitting in the callback queue, the callback function sitting in the micro task queue gets executed first. And that's why we have this kind of output. Let's run this same program in the browser and let's see if we get the same result. So here, just notice that first, these two console.log statements got executed because the set timeout and this promise was executing in the background. And once their execution is complete, the execution of the main thread is complete, then only these two, you know, uh, the callback functions associated with these two asynchronous code got executed. So first we have program starts here, then we have program ends here, then the callback function associated with the promise got executed and it logged result promise data. And then only the callback function associated with the set timeout got executed and it logged set timeout callback executed. Let's see if we get the same result. I mean, the message is in the same order when we run it in the browser, when we run this program in the browser. So here I have the same code which you saw in the slide. Let's run this. So if I save the changes, you can see that the output, the output is logged. So here it says program starts here, program ends here, then the callback function uh, associated with this promise got result, I mean got executed and it logged result promise data and then only the callback function associated with this set timeout function got executed and it logged set timeout callback executed. So this proves that the callback function which is waiting in the micro task queue gets executed first and then only the callback functions which is waiting in the callback queue gets executed. Now there is one more thing which I want to show you here. So let's say for some reason this callback function which is associated with this promise it takes long time in its execution. In that case, the next callback function, the callback function associated with the set timeout function, it will have to wait for its execution to complete. So even though here we have specified the time as zero milliseconds, if the callback function here of this promise is taking long time in its execution, then this callback function will not get executed immediately. It will not get executed after zero milliseconds. To this zero milliseconds, the number of milliseconds which this function will take in its execution that will also get added. So let's say here we are specifying uh, maybe 100 milliseconds. Okay. Now this callback function, since it is executing first, if it takes uh, let's say 5000 milliseconds in its execution, then this callback function will not get executed after 100 milliseconds. To this 100 milliseconds, 5000 milliseconds, which this function has took in its execution, that will also get added. Okay, so let's understand this with a practical example. So let's say I write a for loop here. Okay, so let's say I equals zero, I less than, and let's say we want to loop it for 10, million times okay and i plus plus now in order to loop for 10 million times it might take some time okay so that means whatever time this function will take that will get added to the time interval of this set timeout function let's save the changes and let's see the result so you would have noticed that the set timeout callback i mean this message got logged after a few seconds let me increase this counter here okay let's save the changes now let's increase it one more time let's save the changes now and now you can see that it is taking some time in its execution and once its execution is complete then only the callback function 
of this set timeout function got executed and to this time interval the number of milliseconds which this function took in its execution that also got added so basically if you specify some time interval for a set timeout function that does not mean that after that time interval the callback function associated with that set timeout function will get executed it might take some more time if the previous callback function is taking long time in its execution okay so this is all from this lecture if you have any question related to this lecture then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day